when you were Minister of Defense, you have said, you know, you were a very busy man. I mean, your hands were full, and reports would come to you, but you did not, uh, I guess, appreciate it on the level that you would later in life. Explain uh, to our audience who may not follow you how you became knowledgeable on this subject and have become, a, I would say, an activist and a, and, a, and a very requested speaker at many events having to do with uh, disclosure. Well, uh, at the time, uh, I got sightings reports, and uh, I didn't really have even time to look at them because I was so busy. But they were very similar to uh, sighting reports in the, uh, the United Kingdom and in the United States. About 80% of them were natural phenomena, and the other 20% were genuine UFOs. And that's about all I knew uh, on the subject in those days. I uh, I dedicated the first uh, flying saucer landing pad in a little town called St. Paul's, uh, Alberta, in, in 1967, which was our centennial year. But that was uh, just a fun thing for me to do for this little town where they had so many centennial projects. Uh, and uh, I must admit, it's only in the last 10 years that I knew I began, I should say, I began to know what was going on and was driven to take an interest in it and to try and find out more. And that's been going on ever since. I started out uh, 10 years ago a neophyte and uh, I just knew that UFOs were, uh, were real. <clears throat> I had been <clears throat> given uh, information by a young man in Ottawa and, uh, and I hadn't time to read it, but he eventually uh, he had me listen to an ABC, <coughs> excuse me, program uh, put on by the late Philip uh, uh, Jennings. The Peter Jennings show. Mm -hmm. I, so I remember saying to myself, well, why would all these former Air Force pilots and uh, commercial pilots and, uh, and uh, air traffic controllers and policemen say that they'd seen UFOs if they had? Agreed. Why would they lie? And it didn't seem logical to me, even if they had to put a little bit of a disclaimer at the end of the program to please the people that uh, wanted to be pleased. Um, I just couldn't fathom them going on and saying we saw flying disco overhead and, uh, and that they would have made, <laughs> and so many of them especially, would have made this up. Not so. Anyway, um, one of the things that this young man called Pierre Juno uh, uh, sent me was a book called The the uh, day after Roswell by Lieutenant Colonel Philip Corso, a former U.S. Uh, intelligence officer in the Army. And uh, I won't go into the whole story it was because it's too long and we haven't got time and I haven't got enough voice left <clears throat> to, uh, to go into it. But I took it uh, on a holiday uh, 10 years ago this summer. And 10 years ago this summer in August, I was reading it and uh, said, this isn't like The Life of Pi that I read last year when I couldn't find this book, mm -hmm. which uh, by the end I realized was fiction. This sounds like the real thing <clears throat> because I recognized the names of the generals and the, uh, and the Air Force bases that uh, were mentioned from my days in national defense. And uh, interestingly enough, uh, nephew came along and said, what are you reading? I told him. He said, well, I'm a skeptic. I said, well, you know, um, you're entitled to be a skeptic. Uh, at the time, I said it was a free country, more or less. And uh, I'm going to say less today. And uh, <clears throat> so he went home, and two days later, he phoned and uh, said, I phoned the general and told him what you were reading. And he said, every word is true and more. And um, I had finished the book by then and was completely convinced that it was uh, genuine. And I just accidentally had been invited to speak uh, a UFO uh, thing in, uh, in Toronto at the university in September. And uh, I had absolutely no thought whatsoever of uh, accepting, but uh, you know, I must confess, sometimes I procrastinate a little bit, and I just hadn't got around to telling them. Sure. 
Sure. So um, after reading it, I said, hey, there, there are huge issues here. Um, is the United States Air Force trying to shoot these people down? Um, how much money is going into this? Why don't the American people know how much money it's costing to, uh, to back engineer all of these, uh, this foreign technology? Uh, huge, huge issues that were not in the public domain and still aren't in the, in the uh, official sense. 